everybody. This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we are going to talk about fun facts about Arizona. So this is a pretty cool video because some of the stuff that I even did research on in this video, I didn't even know, but uh, it's a fun facts video. So you're going to walk away feeling a little bit more intelligent about the facts regarding Arizona. So if you're excited about this video, crush up the likes and let's learn about some interesting facts that have to do with Arizona. And uh, let's get started. So Arizona, it is the state flag. If you haven't seen the state flag, it is blue with a copper star and then some rays, some rays of sunshine that go uh, red and yellow up in the background. And where does that come from? So the state flag consists of alternating red and yellow rays that represent the 13 original colonies and the western setting sun. The red and yellow are based on the colors of the Spanish flag that Coronado carried into the region. So Coronado was an explorer. The bottom half of the flag is the same color blue found in the U.S. flag. The copper star identifies Arizona as the largest copper producing state in the Union. So that was one of the major, major uh, exports that Arizona was known for was copper. Not so much anymore, but when you see a lot of these mines down in southern Arizona, around like Y, Arizona, on the way to Mexico, there's a town called Y. Um, you'll see there's like these, these mines, those were copper mines. Some of the stuff out in Globe and Miami was copper mines. So uh, Arizona State Seal, the Arizona main enterprises and attractions are represented in the seal. The background of the seal is a range of mountains with the ro sun rising behind the peaks. At the right side of the mountain is water storage reservoir and a dam with irrigated fields and or orchards. So there are cattle grazing in the right and the quartz mill and the miner with a pick and shovel in the left above the drawing of the Arizona state motto, Dietet Deus, Latin for God and riches. So that's the Arizona state seal. So the Arizona March song is uh, written in 1915. If, you, if you're into music, you might want to look it up, but it's called the Arizona March song. You can listen to it. The state flower in Arizona is the saguaro cactus flower. So in the winter, in the spring or any time of the year, you could potentially see a flower at the top of the saguaros. That's our state flower, okay? But it's mostly it mostly flowers and blooms in May and June months. The state gemstone, for those of you who are into rocks, go to the Tucson Gem Show. Tucson was originally de designated, or uh, turquoise, that's the name of it. You don't know what turquoise is, it's like a blue rock. You'll see a lot of uh, old timers in Arizona wear turquoise bolo ties, or they will wear turquoise watches with the wristband or a turquoise ring, um, turquoise earrings, turquoise necklace. That's the state stone. So turquoise is that blue kind of like uh, aquamarine color uh, necklace. And that's what the state neck neckwear is, is a bolo tie. A bolo tie is like a piece of rawhide that's clamped together by a pennant at the end. So it's kind of like a necklace, but it's a it's a tie, actually. And it's old Western style. So that's that's what that is. And let me just make sure. Uh, so we got 19 people and eight people crushed up the likes. We have Jeff Krug. Who else is out there? Thanks, Jeff, for watching. And glad you finally caught me live. Um, so I'll go back to talking about some of these facts, which I'm pulling off the office of Governor Doug Ducey's list. I also have some other interesting facts as the video goes along. So the state tree is a Palo Verde tree. The state bird is a cactus wren. The cactus wren is like, it's it's black with little white uh, spots on it and it like a, a reddish brown underbelly. That's the cactus wren. So if you see that, be on the lookout. The state fossil is petrified wood. Actually, Arizona has more petrified wood, I believe, than anywhere else. There's a petrified forest in north uh, northeastern Arizona over by uh, four corners there. So the state mammal is a ringtail cat. State reptile, believe it or not, is the bull is the ridge-nosed rattlesnake. Uh, state fish is the Apache trout. So we do have native fish that are in these streams and rivers, and it's pretty good to eat the, the state fish or well the trout. They taste they're pretty good. They have a lot of bones in them though. You, you gotta make sure you debone them. State amphibian is a frog, state butterfly is the uh, two-tailed uh Swallowtail. So now we're moving on to some more interesting facts. So Arizona is a right to work state. The law states no person shall be denied the opportunity to obtain or retain employment because of non-membership in a labor organization. So you don't have to be a part of a union um, or any sort of 
a labor organization to, to work. You have the right to work. So the Arizona state trout, we already talked about that. Uh, Arizona leads the nation in copper production, even still to this day, but it used to be really big back uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Um, let's see, we already talked about the uh, Grand Canyon. So Arizona is home to the Grand Canyon National Park, which is the largest canyon in the world. So the Grand Canyon is the largest canyon for those of you who are into those kind of things. Uh, the amount of copper on the roof of the Capitol building is equivalent to 4,800,000 pennies. So the state Capitol building is copper. And when you go up to it, it looks pretty nice, it, but that's a copper dome that it has right there. Arizona observes mountain standard time on a year round basis. The one exception is the Navajo Nation located in the northeast corner of the state, which observes daylight savings time uh, changes, okay? The battleship USS Arizona was named in honor of the state. For those of you who know about Pearl Harbor, that was where the USS Arizona uh, station or memorial is, right? And it was uh, commissioned in 1913 and launched in 1915 from the Brooklyn Naval Yard. But it takes its name after the state of Arizona. Uh, World War II brought many military personnel to train at Luke, Luke Air Force Base and Thunderbird Fields in Glendale. So uh, that's kind of what ended up leading to the development of Sun City and Sun City Grand is right south of there is Luke Air Force Base, still an active Air Force Base. What's up, John Mullaney, uh, Metal Fever, Joe M, C M, and Robert Vogel, Joe, uh, Jeff Rush, James C, and uh, J Shiloh Shea. Thanks for tuning in. And some of you guys are out in San Carlos Reservation. CM says he's moving to Luke Air Force Base. I wonder how many uh, Air Force people we have uh, that tune into this channel. Uh, that base is out there in right at the base of the White Tank Mountains uh, near just beyond Glendale South of Surprise. Uh, I think it's near Litchfield Park, more or less. So let's keep this uh, gravy train rolling as we continue to talk about facts, right? So in 1926, the Southern Pacific Railroad connected Arizona with the Eastern states. So 1926 was when Arizona really started to ramp up uh, its interconnectivity with the rest of the United States. Bisbee, located in Tombstone Canyon, is known as the queen of copper mines. So when you go to Bisbee, you'll see a lot of the copper mines down there. Uh, during its mining history, the town was the largest city between St. Louis and San Francisco. So when it was in its heyday, Bisbee was where it's at. You go down to Bisbee nowadays, it's a small town, but now you know that Bisbee at one point was a major pioneer town, the largest city between St. Louis and San Francisco. That means bigger than Phoenix, bigger than Salt Lake City, bigger than Denver, at one point in time. So interesting to know that, right? Um, the state's most popular natural wonders in, so people come to Arizona for natural wonders, but I'll give you a list of some of them and you can even write these down. You've got Grand Canyon, you've got Havasu Canyon, which is where that beautiful waterfall is, Havasu Pie. Uh, the Grand Canyon Caves, a lot of people like to do that. They also like to raft the Colorado. You have Lake Powell, Rainbow Bridge, Petrified Forest Painted Desert, Monument Valley, Sunset Crater, which is one of the, which is Meteor Crater right next to it, is one of the largest craters in the world. I think it is the largest crater in the world where a meteor actually hit Arizona. So you can look it up. Meteor Crater in Arizona. It's kind of near um, Flagstaff. So you have Sedona Oak Creek Canyon, Salt River Canyon, Superstition Mountains, Picacho Peak State Park, Saguaro National Park, Chiricahua National Monument, and the Colorado River. So there's some pretty good information. Also, in Lake Havasu, the original London Bridge was shipped to Lake Havasu. So the, the London Bridge, literally the London Bridge from London was put all onto a ship and shipped over to Lake uh, to Arizona. One of the uh, local entrepreneur had purchased it and it's in Lake Havasu City. So the London Bridge that you see in London now is not the original. The original London Bridge is in Lake Havasu City. So just an interesting little, just probably a useless fact, but something that you're like, no way, no kidding, huh? All right, so um, the age of a saguaro cactus is determined by its height. So if you're moving to Arizona, you're gonna see a lot of uh, saguaro cactuses, but the age of a saguaro is determined by its height. 
Um, Four Corners, Arizona is noted as the spot in the United States where a person can stand in all four in four states at the same time. You could go to Four Corners, uh, put all fours on the ground and be in Utah, Colorado, New Mexico and Arizona uh, all in the same place. So that's why Four Corners is really popular. And then so the largest mountain in Arizona is actually pretty tall, 12,643 feet. It's called Mount Humphreys. Uh, also known as San Francisco Peak, uh, north of Flagstaff, and that's the state's highest mountain. We also have a couple other tall mountains, but that's the tallest one, and it's the it's the mountain where there's the ski resort next to um, San Fr or uh, Flagstaff. So let's keep this going. So Barry Goldwater, if you're ever in Deer Valley and you see Deer or Goldwater High School or you see anything with Goldwater, he's a famous public official senator and presidential candidate who was born in Phoenix. So that's why people like him. Uh, in 1939, architect Frank Lloyd Wright, a very famous architect, actually, he built Taliesin West um, in Scottsdale near Phoenix, right? So uh, that's, that's why you'll see Frank Lloyd Wright Boulevard, but that just tells you when you come to Phoenix who these people are, Barry Goldwater and Frank Lloyd Wright. Those are some interesting people for you to familiarize yourself with. Arizona became the 48th state, so it was a late state to be adopted into the into the United States. Uh, only two states are uh, beyond that, Hawaii and Alaska. So Arizona was one of the last states, the 48th state, February 14th, 1912. So we're still a pretty new state. I mean, we're just over 100 years. So on Valentine's Day, every year is Arizona's birthday, just in case you're wondering. And let me check some of these comments. All right, so we've got 17 likes. Thanks to everyone who cranked up the likes. Hope you guys are enjoying all this information that's being dropped. I got a lot more facts for you here. Uh, if you tune into the beginning, you'll learn about the flag and all that um, if you're just now learning. I learned about Goldwater and Frank Lloyd Wright in high school, says David Welker. Yes. Uh, Hustler Cannabis. Hey, brother, do you think cannabis will be recreational in 2020? How likely? Ooh, that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if they're trying to build some more roads and some public transportation and need some funding, they should probably just go recreational with cannabis and allow it, you know. I mean, it's already happening. People are going to do it anyways. Like, I don't I don't know too many people who are um, not smoking marijuana right now because it's illegal. I, I mean, I don't know, but I would assume that most people, if they're going to do it, they're going to smoke because it doesn't carry with it a, a criminal offense anymore. So, um they might as well just go full recreational tax it and use the money to, um, you know, buy some, uh, build some roads and fix the infrastructure. Okay. The world's largest solar telescope is located in Kitts Peak National Observatory in the city of Cells. So that's down there by Tucson. All right. Between the years 1692 and 1711, Father Ubisio Kino focused on area missionary work during the time many grain and farm work began. That was in Arizona. So people were here in Arizona around 1692 and 1711, uh, European, um, what, what are they, uh, card cardinals or Catholic uh, padres. So a person, a person from Arizona is called an Arizonan. So if, you know, if, if you're trying to figure out what you're now called, if you're a New Yorker, or a uh, Californian, you're now called an, an Arizonan if you, if you take up residence here. Phoenix originated in 1866 as a hay camp to supply Camp McDowell. So when you're going past Fountain Hills, you'll see there's a, uh, a casino and a um, Native American reservation there called Fort McDowell. That's the one they're talking about, Camp McDowell. You'll also see there's a road in Phoenix called McDowell. And that's what they're talking about. So Phoenix was originally established as a hay camp supply in 1866. Interesting information. So there you know, Phoenix is a pretty new city also. The famous laborer, leader, Cesar Estrada Chavez. So Cesar Chavez, you guys know about Cesar Chavez. He's a, a, a famous uh, activist for uh, migrant workers. He uh, was born in Yuma. And then... Uh, yeah, so there's some more information. Let me get you some more stuff. So Spanish explorers first arrived in Arizona in the 1530s, but the territory was still part of Mexico through 1840s. So for about 300 years, this was part of Mexico when uh, Spanish explorers first arrived here in 1530s. So that's a long time 
to be a part of Mexico. It's been this place was was more a part of Mexico for a longer period of time than it was a part of the United States, if that makes sense. So the United States took control of the land after winning the Mexican-American War in 1848. Finally, in 1912, Arizona became the 48th state in the Union. So here you go. Although most people think of Arizona as desert, about 15% of the state is covered by forest, including some of the largest national forests in the nation. So, you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, wow, Arizona is just this desert, uh, dry, arid place. Well, they just told you 15% of the state is covered by forest, including some of the largest national forests in the nation. So uh, there's some facts that it's just Phoenix being the biggest city in Tucson. And being the second biggest city, there's no forest, it's just desert. So people settled and colonized or built up in the desert areas because of the sunshine. So the nickname for Arizona is the Copper State or the Grand Canyon State. The population of Arizona at the time of this video is around about 7 to 7.5 million people. Uh, if, if you need to know what, what to abbreviate the state is on your postal uh, address, it's going to be AZ. So that's why you see all this stuff, AZ. I'm from AZ, I'm from PHX, like our airport, PHX. That's the abbreviation for Phoenix. Um, major industries, manufacturing, mining, tourism, and agriculture. So if you wanted to know how Arizona got its name, there's some debate about the origin of the name, but they say some scholars believe the name comes from a Basque phrase, meaning place of the oaks, while other others argue it was Papago Indian phrase, meaning place of the young spring. I've also heard that it got its name Arizona from a, a, a village down in Sonora where it was called Arizona and that became Arizona. So there's there's a little bit of uh, speculation and no one knows exactly how it got its name. Is it a Basque phrase meaning place of oaks? Is it a Papago Indian phrase that means place of the young or little spring? Uh, we don't know. So the lowest Actual elevation in Arizona is 70 feet, and it's located on the Colorado River Valley. Uh, the total size of Arizona's mileage, 113,000 square miles. There's 15 counties in Arizona, so that's something interesting to know. How many counties are there? There's 15. For such a large state, we have uh, some big counties, and there's not a lot of them. So the, considering the, the land mass size, right? All right, so um, famous people who come from Arizona. Does anyone want to take a guess at some of the most famous people from Arizona? Thank you, Peter, for uh, saying that. Jeff, have you had any issues with crime in Arizona? No, I haven't personally. I mean, it just depends on where you're at. I mean, there's some areas that are going to be safer than others. Southeast Phoenix, for the most part, outside of Mesa is safe. Queen Creek, Gilbert, Chandler. I mean, crime happens everywhere, but it... You know, it's pretty safe out here. Okay, so you guys are saying Rex Allen, McCain. Uh, who else? You guys, Barry Goldwater was pretty famous. Keep keep rattling off some guesses, but I'll tell you some people who went to high school here. Steven Spielberg went to high school. Uh, David Spade went to um, high school in Scottsdale. So David Spade. Um, actually, you know who went to college in Arizona State was Barry Bonds. Uh, Steve Kerr went to the University of Arizona, you know, the coach for the Golden State Warriors. Alice Cooper, he lives out here now. Um, but let me give you some other famous names as this list goes on. So Michelle Branch, she's a singer. Emma Stone, she's an actress. Uh, the Indian chief Geronimo. You guys have heard about Geronimo, right? Linda Carter, she's an actress. Barry Goldwater. Um, let's see here. Okay. So do you guys have any, there's, there's other people on this list. Uh, E.T. <laughs> Sean Elliott from the Spurs did go to Tucson. And we've actually got some pretty famous, uh, we got some athletes who are now in the pros who are from Phoenix. Uh, so Arizona is now starting to produce pretty good athletes, um, baseball, basketball, football. So homegrown athletes starting to become a thing. Uh, we used to just have, you know, Sean Elliott, Steve Kerr, uh, Richard Jefferson, and some of those other guys, but we're starting to get to the same place. Oh, the Suns. Yeah, the Suns are on a roll, man. 63 people watching, 31 um, crushed up the likes. Let's keep this uh, list going. I got some more interesting facts that you guys are going to want to be uh, aware of. So 
Um, the saguaro cactus, for the most part, only grows in two places, Arizona and Chile. So it is it is in the Sonoran Desert, I should say. So the Sonoran Desert. So you will see cactus or cactus looking uh, things down in like the Baja of Mexico uh, that look like uh, saguaro. The Baja of Mexico has quite the unique uh, uh, desert settings, but the Sonoran Desert and in Chile is where they have the saguaro. There's about 13 species of rattlesnakes in Arizona. So not all rattlesnakes are going to be the same species. You've got the Mojave, you've got the Western Diamondback, you've got the, uh, oh my gosh, there's so many different rattlesnakes. You, the list goes on, but I'm just telling you right there. Um, about 150 people are bitten by rattlesnakes in Arizona each year. Yikes. Because we, we saw that on our group where we were, people were having encounters with rattlesnakes in our group living in Arizona on Facebook where people were posting them, where they were putting out the, the mouse traps and, the, and they were getting attached to the glue mouse traps, right? Or the um, or someone was right by their gate and they saw a rattlesnake coiled up right there and they were like, whoa, no one told me about this. And those, and people are asking, where does that kind of stuff happen? It happens when you're in, an, in a rural community in the, in the foothills. If you're in the city, the odds of you seeing a rattlesnake are very small. So Arizona is the sixth largest state in the area, but only 17% of the land is privately owned. So we've got a lot of reservations, we've got national parks. So 17% of it being federally owned is pretty interesting. There are 21 federally recognized uh, American Indian tribes in Arizona. One tribe, the Havasupai Indians, actually live inside the Grand Canyon in a village near Havasupai uh, Creek, Havasu Creek. So it might not be called the Sunshine State because that belongs to uh, Florida, but Arizona cities Phoenix and Tucson get sunshine 85% of the year. In Yuma, Arizona, the sun shines 90% of the year. So uh, they th that's that's more than Hawaii and Florida. So just, I mean, we've talked about that recently. This is on coolkidfacts.com. They've got some pretty good information for you guys if you guys wanted to check it out. Arizona is the only place in the United States where you can be in four states at once. We already talked about that. Um, the former planet Pluto, it's no longer a planet anymore, but... Pluto was discovered in Flagstaff in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh. So if you ever get a chance, go up to Flagstaff. They have an observatory up there. That's where they first uh, laid eyes on um, uh, Pluto. So here's some interesting information. So Prescott was our first capital, uh, which looks like a Midwestern town plopped in, in the mountains with its town square courthouse ringed by restaurants and shops. So that, that's what you see when you go down there. Um, Jerome is another uh, historical outpost. It's up, up on the, um, it's, it was a ghost town, essentially. It's up on a mountain when, you, when you're going in between Cottonwood and Prescott, you stop in this ghost town called Jerome. If you get a chance up there, you ever check it out. Ghost towns, just in case you're curious, what, what makes a town a ghost town? Is it because there's actually ghosts? No, this is what makes a ghost town a ghost town is when the town is booming, people are moving there for mining purposes to find gold or, or minerals or whatever. And then the mining industry in that area moves up and it goes to another place. So what do people do when there's a when there's a boom, there's a bust. And so they build up these towns, these villages. Jerome was one of them. They were mining and doing a lot of work there. And then everyone leaves. And then the only thing that's left in this place is ghosts. And that's when the... Uh, the housing department classifies an area as a ghost town. So it's not because they find ghosts there. It's because everyone left the town to go on to greener pastures. That's why you have a couple cities in Arizona that like, if you look at Arizona in the 1800s, the places that were the boom towns and the big cities, Tombstone, Bisbee, Jerome, uh, Globe, Miami, those kind of places, Superior. Nowadays, they're just really small towns and it's Phoenix, Tucson, Flagstaff, Prescott and stuff like that. Well, Prescott was kind of a big, Prescott's one of our older cities or towns that's been around for a while. All right, so there we go. And as far as safety, that's a whole nother video on of itself. And now I'll answer some questions. Payson was awesome up in the mountains. It was 105 in the valley, then went to Payson and it was 77. Perfect. Payson is a great place to go when it is 105 in the valley. Jeff, any UFO sightings over Phoenix that you have seen? No, not recently, Peter. 
you know, about Arizona lights. We had the Phoenix lights. Those were really famous. And that a lot of it was Arizona was used with Davis Monthan and uh, the Barry Golder. I think it's called the Barry Goldwater bombing range. So they used to do a lot of probing out there between Luke, Luke Air Force Base, Davis Monthan and Barry Goldwater bombing range in southeastern Arizona. Kind of like what you have up in uh, uh, White Sands, New Mexico, or even Area 51 in New Mexico. Those are areas where they also say to find aliens, right? Well, I believe because the population of Phoenix and Tucson kind of boomed up and uh, Davis Monthan kind of throttled back and Luke Air Force Base still gets the job done, but not really too much. And I don't even think they use very water, very gold water bombing range. So as the military has gone away from uh, doing all these probing and everything, so too has the, the sightings of uh, alien or UFO kind of sightings gone away. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Maybe, maybe after all, it really wasn't... Uh, extraterrestrials it might have just been our military doing top secret uh probing something to consider oh the, the, so chuck miller says they still do use barry goldwater okay yeah i mean where, where's uh where are the pilots from davis monthan or luke air force Bay, base using to bomb right they've got to be if they're doing any training they've got to be using some sort of bombing range so they're probably still using barry goldwater And then, uh, yeah, so UFOs, Arizona has a lot of creepy legends and supernatural and UFO activity. Yeah, there's also a uh, supposedly a creature that's up in the Mogollon uh, Rim. I think they call him the Mogollon Monster. Mogollon Monster. Yeah, so there's a, you know how you have the Abominable Snowman, you have this, uh, you have this um, Bigfoot sightings and everything, the abom the the... The Mogollon monster is a legendary creature that has been discussed in accounts from central to eastern Arizona along the Mogollon Rim. It is most often described as a Bigfoot or ape-like creature, but descriptions vary. Reports of footprints, video, and hair samples have been documented by enthusiasts, but no conclusive evidence has been found to date. Main, mainstream biologists remain skeptical of the existence of such a creature. So it's supposed to be a little bit of a humanoid kind of creature, uh, the large eyes that claim to be wild and red, its body is said to be covered in, with long black or reddish brown hair with an exclusive exclusion of the chest, face and hands. These are reports from people. Uh, reports claim it has a strong and pungent odor described of that of a dead fish, a skunk with a bad body odor, decaying peat moss and the musk of a snapping turtle. And so if you actually dig in to see about accounts of the Mogollon monster, this this uh, this ape like uh, abominable snowman type Bigfoot kind of guy. There's people who said that they've come across just deers like lined up in some sort of occult type circle, just uh, with blood, like fresh kill and weird noise, and they've heard it. But let's see. Here's the oldest documented account of the Mogollon monster that was recorded in 1903 by the Arizona Republican. If you come to Arizona, that's the Arizona Republic is the oldest uh, newspaper, right? So uh, I.W. Stevens described a creature seen near the Grand Canyon as having long white hair and matted beard that reached to its knees. It wore no clothing, and upon his talon-like fingers were claws, at which two inches long. Upon further inspection, he noted a coat of gray hair nearly covered the body, with here and there a spot of dirty skin showing. He later stated that he after he discovered the creature drinking the blood of two cute cougars, it threatened him with a cub and screamed the wildest, most unearthly screech. And guys, I know that some of you are going to say, oh, get the heck out of Dodge. That sounds like the biggest cockamamie story. There's people out there, when you listen to their stories about their encounters with this, this creature, I mean, they don't appear as though they were hallucinating on something. I mean... They were seeing something that was there, and they seemed pretty convincing. Another early documented sighting was recounted by uh, cryptozoologist Don Davis. During the mid-1940s, he was on a Boy Scout mission near Payson, Arizona, of which he gave the following account. The creature was huge. Its eyes were deep set and hard to see, but they, were, they seemed expressionless. His face seemed pretty much uh, devoid of hair, but... There seemed to be hair along the sides of his face, his chest, shoulders, and arms were massive, especially the upper arms. Easily 
upwards of six inches in diameter, perhaps much, much more. I could see he was pretty hairy, but didn't observe really how thick the body hair was. The face was square and square chin, uh, chin like a box. Uh, so here's another one. Majorie Grimes, a White River, Arizona resident, claimed to have sighted the creature a number of times between 1982 and 2004. So supposedly, if there is this type of creature, it's been sighted here recently as of 2004. She described the creature as black, tall, and walking in strides. So you've heard the creature is white, brownish red, and then now black. So um, the number of people on the Fort Apache Indian Reservation also claim to have seen the same creature. So, uh, you know, it's, there's, there's countless stories about this, uh, this it's been documented in a few different books. Also, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's kind of weird, but, uh, yeah, you never know what's out there. I mean, seriously, uh, David Welker, I'm sure Coop Chupacabra is actually real. There are real. There are all kinds of creepy creatures in Southeastern Arizona. And that's true. I mean, you have Cota Monday, you have the ringtail cat, and then you you know you go up into these caves and you see things and you're like, are my eyes playing tricks on me or what the heck is that? I've never seen something like that. And there, so there is some of this uh, spooky stuff that exists that could be hidden even from you know uh, modern science. And one of them is the chupacabra. So uh, if you haven't already heard of the chupacabra, that's something to look up. And they've actually found this chupacabra. It's like it's almost like a small dog that's got mange. And, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of small. Uh, it's not very big, but they, they call it the goat sucker. Um, because they've seen like goats, this happened in Texas and some other places around the Southwest where they would find where farmers would come out and they, and something had attacked and sucked the blood of the goat. And it happened a couple times. So that's how it got the name Chubacabra, but they've actually filmed and recorded this. And some say, Oh, it's a coyote with mange or, oh, it's a dog with mange because it's kind of, it's got hair, but it's kind of wiry hair and it's not very thick hair. So, um, Gabby Giffords was pro gun until she got brain damage. Go figure. Okay. Um, that's what, oh, okay. Someone's talking about that. Chuck Miller, the, the Mogollon monster haunts and kill. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to read that. I, I, I sometimes get suckered into some of these things. Um, Sean David Meister, we moved to Arizona December 6th. Anything cool for Christmas, lights, etc. Yeah, I mean, if you go down to there's boo at the there's boo at the zoo lights. So if you go down to the zoo lights down in uh to uh the Phoenix Zoo, that's something that families like to do. Also, in the Papago Arcadia area, if you're in South Mountain around Camelback, a lot of those houses put on uh so you, if you're just looking like I don't know, say December 12th, December 15th, December 20th. You go up into like the Camelback Arcadia area, you'll see there's they do the, they do decorative uh, Christmas stuff in the area in that area. Some houses, you know, just pop out of nowhere and they want to make a name for themselves, so they'll do uh, interesting Christmas decorations. But that's where I would start if I was you is down in the Camelback area, Arcadia, around about uh, December fifteenth uh, to December twenty fourth you'll see there's some pretty cool houses with nice lights and it's something you can do on a Friday or a Saturday night or a Tuesday night to take the kids. And that's what uh, I've done a couple times. So Camelback Arcadia area is going to have the lights. Also there's the zoo and then the botanical garden does some stuff with uh, lights at night. They call it boo at the zoo. I don't, I don't know if they still call it boo at the zoo, but that's what it was called. All right, so David Welker, Sierra Vista and Benson have cool Christmas parades. I'm sure other places do. I've only been to the ones. All right. Amanda Lynn Weber says, what about the Mormon temple in Mesa? Does the Mormon temple in Mesa do some uh, lights? Interesting. Okay, so there you go. In Tucson, check if you're in Tucson and you want to see some winter lights, Chuck Miller says, check out Winter Haven. James C. says the, the Phoenix Zoo is cool for winter lights also. These are things that you would see uh, probably just after Thanksgiving. They'd probably start setting it up all the way up until Christmas. And then they say that the Mormon Temple in Mesa does some pretty cool stuff uh, with huge lights at the temple. So if you go to in Gilbert, they have a big Mormon Temple. 
And then in Mesa, they have a Mormon temple and they, and they get festive and do all sorts of things. Also in Gilbert, like recently they've been decorating that water tower. So the water tower gets kind of, uh, kind of decorative and they put all sorts of lights around Gilbert and, uh, everywhere is going to have lights. Uh, they're all the downtown areas. Scottsdale is going to have lights. Um, but I think the best is going to, as far as the houses that do it right are in Arcadia and Camelback from my experience. All right. So as far as facts go, any, did I miss any? If you guys, uh, if you guys missed the facts, you can watch this video again. We went over almost 50 different Arizona facts, everything from the state flower to the state rock to the state um, flag to the, to the way that Arizona gets its name. Uh, so all that's cool. And then you guys say, uh, awesome winter parade in Holbrook, Arizona, says Chuck Miller. Russian bid. Jeff, I heard tons of people are moving to Phoenix area over the last couple of years. I say in five years, prices will be up around one third from where they are now. So a couple of my neighbors have said the same kind of thing. And I'll try to, I'll try to uh, put it all into a, um, we're talking people who have also lived here. They, this is what they believe based on their experience with 2008 in terms of housing prices. Wow, 49 people crushed up the likes. We have 68 people watching. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes. All right, so this is what they basically said, uh, at least their theory. Theories are, everyone has a theory, but this is this seems reasonable. So they said that they don't think, because Trump being tr Trump being the president, they, they noticed that he has this, uh, you know, this ego, right? He doesn't want to, Trump's ego would not put him in a situation where he would want to be the commander in chief of an American economy that was on the verge of tanking. So uh, if he was to show signs of not being interested in taking the job because he doesn't want to be the guy who goes down in history of being the commander in chief during a recession or an economic depression, uh, but him being still pretty excited about uh, being interested in the economy, they believe that if he gets elected a second time, that the the strength of the U.S. economy would probably last two years into his present two years into his second term. So that would put us around about 2022 for an economic slowdown based on that. And they say the last two years, things would just kind of start slowly, like kind of fizzling down. Uh, typically, that's what happens because the U.S. economy tends to work in 10 to 15 year cycles in terms of uh, peaks and economic recessions. So uh, that's the theory that I've heard from a couple of my neighbors. They think that if if Trump gets reelected, you can expect a strong U.S. economy for, for probably from here another three to four years. Now, anything's possible, but that's just kind of what people are thinking. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think we definitely are in a, uh, I think it's reasonable to assume we're in a bubble because uh, if I just look at some of these, but just because we're in a bubble doesn't mean that we're still not going to grow the bubble, you know, like the bubble's still going to grow. Um, but we might be getting close to the, to, to the point where it's too late to buy because housing prices could keep going up and that's what we keep seeing, but it could get to a point here pretty soon uh, where it's too late to buy because prices are too high and we're close, closing in on the pop of the bubble. But the reason people think we're in a housing bubble or even a U.S. Bu or a U.S. economy bubble, corporations don't. Corporations are running on debt. They're, um, the American debt is really high. Uh, there's just a lot of problems economically that are kind of being swept under the rug as they continue to blow hot air into the bubble. And a lot of these corporations, I think last year they said the most CEOs ever got fired. So there's a lot of turmoil inside of a lot of corporations inside the United States. And as a lot of people think that China is struggling, the, the, the evidence would suggest contrary to, to that, that China is actually getting stronger. And some people are speculating that the Chinese yuan could end up replacing the U.S. dollar as the global reserve currency just because China is moving so fast, uh, so quickly in such a powerful position. In spite of what the U.S. government and the media tells you, China is actually surging. 
Uh, and they're not so dependent upon the U.S. economy now because the global economy is so healthy that they don't need the U.S. to buy their goods. They'll just sell to other countries, to the European Union even. So there is a little bit of this uh, underbelly of reality that exists in the United States that the, the economy uh, is not as healthy as it is, even though we keep getting new highs on Wall Street and whatnot. So they just keep kind of printing more money into the system, but it's not built on a strong foundation. And at some point, people think it's all going to come toppling down like a house of cards. And people who are, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you can do to be prepared for that one if it ever does happen. Um, Brian Schwartz says, okay, so David Welker says, McDonald's CEO just got fired, but he fired because he's a perv and had a relationship with McDonald's employee. Uh, Russian visit. Jeff, one thing I can't stand looking at homes in Arizona are those lame cluster mailboxes in neighborhoods. Oh, yeah, those cluster mailbox things where everyone's got to come together to get their mail. Chuck Miller says, Bitcoin, gold, guns, and ammo is currency. <laughs> Good. I've got, I've got ammo. I've got plenty of that. I've got 30 odd six, which I think would be in demand. I've got, because, um, you know, 30 odd six can take down big game. And I know the vegans in, in, in a, in an economic downturn, I don't think uh, fresh fruit and vegetables are going to be as readily available as vegans would like. So uh, big game and uh, elk and stuff like that might be back in the back in the equation, even for vegans, uh, if it ever got to that point. But 30 out six buckshot and uh, slugs and I have, you know, 22. But, yeah, I, I also believe that uh, uh, rounds bullets would be currency and I have Bitcoin. So we'll see. Um, you know, I'm a bit uh, Bitcoin fan. And then Zeus says marijuana would be a huge currency. I don't know. I mean, if it got if it got that bad, people would just be planting marijuana up in the hills, and it'd be easily available. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe the people in the city would be looking for it. I don't know. A Hill says China steals our technology. Well, the, tell me something. We, tell me something we don't know. I mean, China has been known. They just basically take everything that we do. I mean. What has China invented? That's what I want to know. Uh, if you look at smartphone technology, that was created by the U.S. government. Who created the airplane? Um, the Wright brothers. So aviation technology comes from the United States. Uh, I mean, I will say this. Gunpowder was supposedly invented by the Chinese. I mean, for all you gun gun guys out there, gunpowder comes. It is, that's where fireworks also come from. But uh I mean, in the last 120 years, what has the Communist Republic of China actually innovated and created that was not originally a brainchild of Western civilization, whether it be the Internet? I mean, 5G, 5G, who created 5G technology? Does anyone know? It, I don't think it was a, a brainchild of the Chinese government, but they're running away with it. They just they basically said, hey, we're just going to implement 5G towers and get rid of the 4G towers. And the United States, because we're so heavily regulated, couldn't just roll out 4G and 5G without testing it. China, on the other hand, they already got 5G. And that's a big thing right now is the race for 5G. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're into Bitcoin, um, one of the things that China is now uh, rolling out is blockchain technology. And they're actually beating America uh, to the punch on that, where the federal government in China is now deploying cryptocurrency as a form of uh, currency. The reason they like cryptocurrency opposed to fiat currency, fiat currency works great for uh, paper dollars and coins, but when it comes to doing digital transactions, blockchain technology is a more secure, faster and more efficient um, technology for uh, currency transactions because it's faster. For example, if you need to make an international transaction, say you need to make a wire to Australia, in order to send that international transfer, you've got to go through a third party intermediary with blockchain cryptocurrency. It's a lot. It's in, it's all it could be instantaneous. So uh, people who like to send money internationally, especially in a global uh, economic climate, they, they they see the value in a faster uh, technology that doesn't involve a third party intermediary and all that like you have with current fiat systems. Fiat systems. It's like the difference between cassette and CD player. Uh, cassettes still work. It's just at some point they're going to realize that blockchain is superior to fiat currency. So cryptocurrency is going to uh, ultimately be the technology that passes up um, 
because we're in a digital age. When they when they rolled out fiat currency after they replaced gold, because gold and silver used to be the, the 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 thing. It'd be like, hey, I'm a miner, and let me give you a let me take a chisel and chisel off some of this silver, and you can give me that sandwich right there. And then they decided to deposit their gold and silver in the banks, and then get a promissory note, which became paper money and coins. Well, when fiat currency came out in the seventies, it wasn't a um, there was no such thing really as credit cards and digital payment methods. So now that you have this thing where people are paying digitally, they need to upgrade the technology. And that's why. So the Chinese government implementing the financial upgrade and the wireless upgrade of 5G and then the financial upgrade of blockchain is what's putting them in the position to be actually, even though the technology is a Western uh, technology, they're outpacing them in the implementation of it. So it's it's uh, so they're, they're saying that 5G is unhealthy and it is dangerous, but China's already rolled it out. Um, you don't really hear too much about health defects in China as of right now. You haven't heard that birds are falling out of the sky in China, uh, that fish are dying on the, but they could be sweeping all that under the rug. We don't know. But a lot of people say that 5G is dangerous. People who are experts in the field of radiation and electromagnetic energy. But then there's people who say, it actually could be, you know, there's people who say, what if this whole time all these people are getting worked up about a new technology like 5G, but it ends up being actually safer than what we have right now. Uh, so, you know, it depends on who you listen to and what opinion you subscribe to. And I'm personally not a radiation expert, but I know that some people say that the levels of radiation with 5G are a lot higher. So we'll see. But either way, I know Trump already said that they're going to roll out 5G in the United States. So it's already coming. It's just China's already doing it ahead of us. In fact, uh, one of the, the greatest IP wars that's taking place is between, I think it's called Highway or what's it called? Uh, what's there? So you have Apple and then they have uh, Highway or uh, Huawei, Huawei in China, Huawei, Huawei. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> um, so Huawei is a is like the equivalent of Apple. They create software or hardware technologies that people will use for phones and whatnot. And they're right now they they've because of so much regulation in the United States, Huawei is out is outpacing on a global sales uh, level with 5G uh, products they're selling to Europe and whatnot. And the United States government got caught with its pants down, or the United States economy got caught with its pants down because. China just started selling and they're and they're making a lot of money. And Huawei started uh, taking the technology and beating Apple to the punch. And then that's when the big trade war started to kick off was like, whoa, China's taking everything. They're not playing by the same rules. They're not following the same guidelines. And they're they're running away with it. They're running. They're stealing. the They're stealing it. They're stealing the economy. They're stealing the intellectual property. And a lot of it was revolving around Huawei's domination of uh, who, who was down, who's who was going to be the data server for everything? And Apple and some of these American companies that were used to it were getting outpaced by Huawei. I don't know if you guys know that. Okay, it's Huawei. Got it. <laughs> Huawei. Uh, yeah, it's like saying, uh, what is it when you go to China? They say, um, Ni Hao. I mean, I try to say it like Chinese, but I don't know if I'm saying Ni Hao. <laughs> um, let's see. There are world leaders and figures openly looking for population control. I think 5G, chemtrails, and GMO are good for you. Oh, no, I don't think that. Um, we, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, uh, what, it all, what it all comes with it. it. I mean, we can speculate and say it's, uh, it's not natural, it's not organic, therefore it's bad. But, I mean, this screen that I'm televising from is not natural either. I mean, it's synthetic <laughs> this camera is not a natural uh phenomena but the radio waves that i'm transmitting from the wireless waves i mean so i don't i don't know i i mean i can i can i can either side with the organic types or i could side with the fact that whatever technology direction we're going in all i can say is i'm not an expert in the field um that's 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 what i can say as far as 5G goes, I know that that's what a lot of that's what's spurring the trade war, though, is this uh, this race to and basically it's what device are people going to be using when they're 
doing it. So the United States government or the United States in general has been heavily invested in people using their hardware to um, communicate. And not just uh, the, not just their hardware, but also their platforms, Google, Facebook. So that's why, uh, because Facebook gets all of these signups from India and Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. So if a Chinese company comes in and starts stealing their thunder and everyone starts using, I don't know, WeChat or QQ or some or TikTok, Chinese companies, and they stop using Facebook, Instagram or uh, WhatsApp, not only are they no longer using Apple devices, they're using Huawei. Uh, devices, then they start using um, TikTok or QQ or WeChat. So, so then the United States, really no joke, starts to become second to China. And that's what's happening. And the United States government woke up to that and they're like, well, trade war, we got to do this. <laughs> it's war. It's, I mean, this, this, is what it, this is what happened. Uh, so, yeah, Chuck, Chuck's right. Um, anyways, guys, so... I will see you guys next time. Thanks to all the 60 people who crushed up the likes 50 minutes into this video, and we will see you guys.